Thank you to the organizers to allow me to present uh, the work of MSF in Malawi prisons. Um, before getting into the uh, uh, abstract itself, I will just introduce a bit uh, what is the context in Malawi prisons to give you an understanding of where we work. So Malawi prisons uh, are characterized by a lack of hygiene and inadequate sanitation. They have a very uh, poor ratio of latrines and showers per prisoners, which can cause a lot of diarrhea and skin diseases. It has a big overcrowding. Uh, some prisons have more than 340% of their capacity with a poor ventilation, which increases the risk of TB and respiratory infections transmission inside prison cells. Uh, this is a typical cell of Malawi prison uh, where there should be only 20 prisoners, but they are more or less 60 prisoners at the time. Uh, they sleep by floor and they have no space uh, uh, in between each other. Uh, the normal um, Mandela rules establish that every prisoner should have four meters, square meters, but this is not the case in Malawi prisons. This small graph is just to show uh, a mathematical modeling that we did uh, last year in prisons, uh, particularly Maoli, Maula prison where we could uh, see that the uh, congestion in relation to TB risk of transmission is relatively high in, in prison. Uh, the black dotted line is the prevalence in Maula prison by then, it's 0.71%. So with the congestion of 340% and prisoners staying over a year in prison, we expect at least 198 new cases of TB in prison. At the same time, uh, it is uh, challenging in regards of treatment that they receive, internal dynamics, uh, different power games inside prison that can cause violence. There is an inadequate nutrition, uh, which uh, represents malnutrition and vitamin deficiencies, like pellagra. Uh, that's the meal that they receive once a day per day. Uh, it's uh, based in enzyma, which is a maize paste, paste uh, um, and sometimes they receive beans as well. So MSF is working currently in two prisons uh, in Malawi. Well, normally there are three big prisons that represent 50% of the population of, of Malawi prisons, uh, which is around 15,000. So we are working in Lilongwe, in Maula prison, where it has a capacity of 800 prisoners, but normally it holds more than 2,700 prisoners. And the HIV prevalence that we found uh, in this prison is 14.2%, which is more or less in relation to the prevalence in Lilongwe city. In Chichiri prison, it's in the southern region of Malawi, uh, where it has a capacity of 500 to 600 prisoners, but it holds 1,870 prisoners, where the HIV prevalence is around 22.5% uh, in relation with blunt tire prevalence, which is higher uh, in the southern part of Malawi. So what we have been doing in the last uh, four years, from 2014 to 2017, is introducing a three-phase model of screening uh, and model of care, uh, which is based in the uh, Southern African Development Communities model. Uh, where we test uh, and screen prisoners at entry, stay, and exit. Uh, and we do it uh, for HIV, uh, TB, we do symptomatic screening, followed by gene expert uh, or sput sputum microscopy. We do STI testing, syphilis rapid test, uh, hepatitis B vaccination, and nutrition assessment for uh, body mass index. We do the same uh, at stay, uh, but for the stay, we do two big mass screenings per year, uh, where we go cell by cell and we do the same testing. And we offer as well uh, counseling and patient support and at the same time, we support the clinic in prison uh, where we have uh, uh, human resources and, and medication that we provide additionally. And we do the same package at exit before prisoners go out from prison. This is a bit of the result that we have uh, during the time of the intervention before getting into, into the TB uh, screening package. Uh, so from 2014 to 2017, in both prisons, we have improved the testing at, uh, for prisoners uh, when they are coming into prison. And the initiation has increased. Um, but we have some challenges in regards to bioload uh, in Maula prison during 2017 because of some challenges of the machine. But uh, overall, the, the, yeah, the bioload and detectability is, is uh, almost 89 to 92% in both prisons. Uh, the ART initiation among newly diagnosed prisoners has decreased over time. Uh, it, at the beginning, it was taking more than 60 to 70 days to initiate patients on treatment after they've been tested positive. Nowadays, we are having only a few days before they initiate treatment. The aim of our study in prison uh, was to uh, assess how TB case finding changed over time from 2014 to 2017 and determine the factors associated with developing TB disease with, while prisoners are in prison. So we started in 2014 with symptomatic screening, the classical WHO uh, symptoms. Uh, in 2015, we, we added uh, gene expert as an additional screening tool. And in 2017, during the big mass screening, we added a mobile X-ray machine in collaboration with a partner called Challenge, Challenge TB. Uh, where we included the X-ray, uh, mobile X-ray, uh, with digital uh, um, and reading uh, by clinicians uh, for the assessment of TB. 
So this is a retrospective analysis uh, data uh, from routine collected data from 2014 to 2017. Uh, case notification rate was calculated uh, for new cases, health reported as never been treated previously. Uh, to determine the person time at risk, we use a sum of monthly inmate count excluding uh, on TB treatment for incident cases. And we use a three months cutoff to separate prevalent cases from entry cases, uh, incident cases, which are more than three months in this case. And we applied a multivariate logistic regression to assess factors associated with the development of TB. This analysis met the criteria of the MSF ERB for exemption. Um, so we have seen that from 2014 to 2017, the TB case notification has increased substantially. From 2014, in Maula prison, we had 430 over 100,000 prisoners. And in 2017, with the additional screening method, we are at 4,621. And similarly to Chichiri, from 430, uh, we came to 3,346. And that compared to the national TB estimated incidence, which is 192 over 100,000 persons per year. In regard to patient characteristics, uh, from 2014 to 2017, uh, we notified 468 TB cases. Out of them, 63, or 13.5%, had extrapulmonary TB. 464 uh, were males, uh, which represents 99%, and the median age was 32 years old. Uh, TB HIV co-infection is relatively high in Malawi. In prisons, it's the same case. Uh, we have 46%, which represents 213. And uh, um, prisoners having a uh, body mass index uh, less than 18.5% represent 21%. What risk factors are associated with developing TB in prison? Uh, out of the 17,000 prisoners uh, that were assessed, 80%, um, which is 376 out of 468, had TB uh, after three months into entering into prison. So incidence in prison is high. Uh, that means that transmission is happening inside prison, as I explained in the initial slides. So all the prisoners that have been diagnosed as TB initiated treatment, and the uh, risk for developing TB is associated highly with the HIV at 3.8 odds uh, uh, compared to the HIV negative ones. Um, the nutrition as well is an important factor, which is represents uh, prisoners having a, a volume at body mass index inferior at 18.5. It represents two odds uh, radio compared to the ones having a good nutrition. And time incarcerated in prison is the highest one, representing 7.1 times compared to the ones that are less than, eight, than 12 months in prison. This slide is just to show the screening and lab test that we use for TB and the progression uh, over time from 2014 to 2017. As I said, we started with symptomatic TB screening. And we had the gene expert only by 2015, and the chest x-ray uh, mobile uh, digital one uh, by 2017 only. What limitations we found in our study? Uh, well, being a retrospective analysis, so we have some data problems at the beginning of the intervention 2014-2015 that were improved uh, from 2015 uh, forward. There is a high turnover of prison population in prison, which represents a, a huge problem, as there are prisoners that stay only for a short period of time, which have no conviction, and they are remandese prisoners. Uh, so it is a very dynamic population. Uh, what can we conclude of our uh, study in prison is that Malawi prisons remain a high risk setting for acquiring developing TB in prison, uh, and that's because uh, of the challenges that prisoners are confronted to, so poor nutrition, a high congested uh, cell, and poor ventilation. An implementation of systematic TB screening may have increased, improved uh, significantly the TB case finding in prison, adding the X-ray that we had in 2017. This model can be replicated in similar contexts and in similar prisons in Malawi. And we should uh, uh, start new strategies for preventing uh, prisoners to develop active TB in prisons, like preventive treatment, that now it is available for latent TB treatment. What are the next steps for us? Uh, we have developed this toolkit, which is a basic pragmatic toolkit to, to start uh, other prisons with the three phases modeling of a screening. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a toolkit that it is used currently in the country. We have introduced to the prison health services, and it is available as well online in the uh, Southern Africa Medical Unit site. Um, we are sharing our experiences with other prisons in Malawi and other organizations. They, so they come to our prisons where we show how this implementation is done, so they can take back this to their prisons. And we are working in continuous advocacy about overcrowding, food, and living conditions, because it's still the main challenges in prisons in Malawi. 
And as a last step, we are, we are working in a proposal uh, for including X-ray as a screening uh, tool for entry, stay, and exit into prisons. And we are trying to, to as well, uh, to work in a prevention uh, strategy for treatment for latent TB. So we are, we're trying to, to do a 3-HP, a rifapentine uh, isoniazid acid uh, treatment for light, latent TB. So this proposal is uh, ongoing as a work currently, and we are going to present uh, it to our headquarters. Thank you so much for your attention.